Chapter 7. Lysias's Explanations. Clarencio's periodic visits and Lysias's daily attention continued. As I tried to get used to my new duties, sensations of ease relieved my heart. The pain and the impediments to my getting around steadily decreased. I noticed, however, that whenever I thought about my physical problems, then the anguish, the fear of the unknown, and the discomfort of maladjustment all returned. But in spite of everything, I felt a certain inner security. I enjoyed myself by contemplating the vast horizons while leaning out of my spacious windows. The aspects of nature impressed me most of all. Nearly everything seemed to be an improved copy of Earth. The colors were more harmonious and the substances more delicate. The ground was carpeted with vegetation and there were large trees, rich orchards, and delightful gardens. A range of hills crowned with light stood beyond the plain on which the colony lay. All the areas seemed to be caringly tended. There were graceful buildings not too far away, placed at regular intervals and displaying various shapes. Every one of them had flowers at the entrance. I noticed some charming little houses scattered among them, surrounded by walls of ivy. Various roses bloomed here and there, decorating the green with contrasting colors. Birds with brilliant plumage crisscrossed the skies, and at times they alighted in groups on the bright white spires that reached for the sky like huge lilies. From the broad windows, I curiously observed the activity in the complex. I was extremely surprised to notice domestic animals among the leafy trees planted all in a row towards the back of the complex. During my introspective battles, I lost myself in speculation of all sorts. Considering that I found myself on a spiritual plane, per se, I couldn't understand the multiplicity of forms similar to those on the planet. Lysias, my kind daily companion, was always ready to explain everything. The death of the body doesn't lead humans to some miraculous state of being, he said. Every evolutionary process implies gradation. There are many, many regions for discarnates, just as there are innumerable and surprising planes for incarnates. Souls and sentiments, forms and things obey the principles of natural evolution and a just hierarchy. However, I was worried because I had stayed there in the hospital for so many weeks without a single visit from anyone I had known during my lifetime. After all, I wasn't the only one in my circle to have deciphered the enigma of the grave. My parents had taken the great journey before me. Several friends had preceded me at other times. So why had none of them appeared in the room of spiritual infirmity uh, to bring comfort to my aching heart? A few moments of consolation would suffice. One day I could no longer contain myself, and I asked my attentive nurse, My dear Lysias, is it possible here to meet those who preceded us in the death of the physical body? Why not? Do you think you have been forgotten? Yes, I do. Why hasn't anyone come to see me? On earth, I could always count on my mother's selflessness, but so far I have heard nothing from her. My father also made the great voyage three years before me. Well, explained Lysias, your mother has been helping you night and day ever since the crisis that foreshadowed your arrival. She doubled her maternal interest in your welfare when you lay down to abandon your terrestrial shell. Perhaps you haven't realized that your stay in the lower spheres lasted for over eight years. In all that time, she never lost hope. She often came to Nasalar to intercede on your behalf. She enlisted the kind services of Clarencio, who began visiting you frequently until the moment when the conceited doctor of earth gave way to the child of heaven. Do you understand now? I felt my eyes welling up with tears. I hadn't known how many years I had been away from the terrestrial soil. I wanted to find out more about that unperceived watch care, but couldn't. My vocal cords seemed numb, and I had a knot of tears dammed up in my heart. 
That day when you prayed with all your soul, continued Lysias, when you realized that everything in the universe belonged to our sublime Father, even your tears were different. Don't you know that there are rains that destroy the rains that create? The same is true for tears. Of course, the Lord doesn't wait for our prayers to love us. Yet we must have a certain receptive attitude in order to understand his infinite goodness. A dirty mirror cannot reflect light. Thus, it is not the Father who needs our penance. It is we who need penance because of the inestimable service it renders us. Do you understand? In answer to your caring mother's pleas, Clarencio had no trouble finding you, whereas it took you a long time to find him. I was told that when your mother heard that her son had been rescued from the dark veils with the help of prayer, she wept with joy. And where is she? I exclaimed. If I could, I would like to see her, to embrace her, to fall on my knees at her feet. She doesn't live in Nasolar, explained Lysias. She lives in higher realms, where she works not only for you. Noting my disappointment, he kindly added, Rest assured she will come to see you sooner than you might think. When one ardently desires something, one is already on the way to obtaining it. It is, in this particular instance, you have the lesson of your own case. For years you wandered around like a feather at random, harboring fear, sadness, and disillusionment. But as soon as you firmly thought of the need to receive divine assistance, you expanded the range of your mental vibrations and obtained vision and help. My eyes cleared up and encouraged by the explanations I had just received, I exclaimed resolutely, Then I'll wish it with all my strength, that, and she will come. She will come. Lysias smiled knowingly and offered a generous warning, he affirmed as he took his leave. You must not forget that any worthwhile achievement requires three fundamental prerequisites. First, desire it. Second, know how to desire it. Third, deserve it. In other words, an active will, persevering work, and justifiable merit. My visitor reached the exit with a smile while I silently meditated upon that complex plan that had been expressed in so few words.